Hello, it's National Storytelling Day today. This is the day when we celebrate stories, old and new, stories in print and the oral traditional tales. Now, it's also Scotland's Year of Stories, so we're going to be celebrating the National Day of Stories with an oral traditional tale from South Ayrshire. Now, oral traditional tales are the oldest stories there are. They've been around since well before we were able to have print books, well before people were able to read. And they have become ingrained in our memory. Lots of them are very similar no matter where you go. But this story is a story from Ayrshire and it's called The Tale of the Wee Bannock. Now, a bannock is like a kind of scone come bread and people would put butter on it or they would eat it with cheese or goodness knows what else they would eat it with. They just love the bannock. Quite like a bannock myself, I have to say. So if you're sitting comfortably and we're ready and we'll begin. Because this story starts just outside here in a wee cottage with a little old man and a little old lady. Now the little old man, he is a farmer and he has five sheep, four cows, three big fat hens, a big proud stocking cotro. I can't talk kittens. Well, the old man looked after the farm animals while his wife spun by the side of the fire. Now, the kittens, they often clawed at the old wife's spinnel and the old wife wasn't very happy with this. So she would go, shoo, shoo, when you go, go away now. Well, the old man and his wife lived happy together and they ate well, but they always had a great big bowl of porridge for their breakfast. Now, I don't know if you've ever had porridge for your breakfast before, but come lunchtime, you're just like the old man and the old woman, you'll probably be eating a wee bit peckish. So the old man and the old woman used to have a wee bit bacon or maybe, you know, we wee scone, a wee tatty scone, oh, maybe just a wee taste of oat cakes or something. But this day, the old woman thinks to herself, I've no made bannocks for a while. I think I'm going to make myself a wee oat bannock. So she gathers together their ingredients. She gets her flour. She gets her oats. She gets her bacon fat, which is one of the most important things. You need your bacon fat to make it all tasty. She gets her bacon powder and she gets a bit salt. And she puts them all together and she mixes them all up until she's got two nice big fat bannocks and she sits them next to the fire. So the wee old man, he's beginning to feel a wee bit peckish and think to himself, oh, I can go get a wee cup of tea then now. I wonder what the wife's been making. So off he goes into the house and sits by the fire and he sees two bannocks sitting there. Oh, he says, that's a bit tasty. Mmm, I wonder if there's only butter. And he he gets up and gets some butter. Glyphs one of the bannocks, splits it in two and starts slathering the butter on. Oh my goodness me, it's just ridiculous the amount of butter he uses. It's all melty and oh, you'd think it was delicious. Oh, the wee old man's about to take a bite out of his barrack when the other barrack gets up. Well, my goodness me, it's not going to sit there and get the old woman eating it. And it thinks to itself, I'm off out of here. So up at Geese, runs around the corner, out the door, down the hill and far away. And the old woman, she wants to chase after it, but she's not quite fast enough. So this blooming big bannock is off, out and away. Well, it runs round and round and round until he comes to a thatched cottage. Now this is a posh who's this. There's a tailor, two apprentices and the tailor's wife. Now the tailor and the apprentices, they're sitting sewing and the wee bannock runs in the house and the tailor and his apprentices don't know where it is and they get a big shock and they're going ah! and they run behind the old woman and the woman just locks the tailor's wife she just looks at them and she says oh for goodness sake it's just a wee bannock and she says in fact she says if you catch it we can hear bannock with a wee taste of milk Oh, says the tailor and the apprentices, and they chase that bannock round about the house. My goodness, the apprentices throw a boat of cloth at it, they throw scissors at it, they throw themselves at it. But can they catch that wee bannock? No, they cannot catch the bannock. He escapes and he runs out the house and he runs on till he comes to a wee house down the road. Now, this house, it belongs to the weaver, and the weaver is sitting there with his loom. And his wife, she's winding the hank, yank of yarn. Tippy, 
says the weaver. What was that? Oh, she says, it's just a wee bannock. Oh, he says, I can go a wee taste of bannock. For that grill you gave me the day was guy thin. Catch it, woman. Come on, let's catch it. So up they get and they chase that bannock round about this. Under the table, over the table, behind the chair, round the chair, behind the curtains. Oh, upstairs, downstairs, run and run and run and run and run and run and run a bit. My goodness, though, that wee bannock gees on the shift and out he goes. But he runs, wrecked about, and straight out the door and out of the hill like a new torch sheep or a mad coo. Well, he ran fins into the next two he fins, and in there, straight to the fireside, he goes, where's a good wife churning some butter. Oh, she says, come on, wee barnock, for I'm having cream and bread the day for my tea. <laughs> I think so, wee barnock, you can hae cream and bread for your tea, but you're no haying me. Oh, and he runs away, and as he's running out, he knocks out the churn, which is just a good thing, because that woman was after him, but she has to stop to put the churn up. So she sets the churn up and by this time the wee bannock has ran off down the hill towards the mill. Well, when he gets to the mill, the miller's sifting the meal in the trough and the miller's just thinking to itself, hmm, do you know what, I could just go, ma'am, I'm getting a wee bit thirsty, I could just go a wee pint of ale here. And what's nice a wee pint of ale is a wee bannock, and oh my goodness me, he says it's a sign of plenty right enough when you see a wee bannock running about. We need the running after it. <gasps> Come here, wee bannock, he says. Come a by in and I'll give you a night's quarters. <laughs> I thinks the wee bannock. I'll no be a night's quarters in your stu in your bed you're giving me. I'll be a night's quarters in your stomach. And I'm no for that at all. So the wee bannock jumps by the miller, he jumps into the flower, he jumps out the flower, he jumps into the grain, he jumps out the grain, and the miller's chasing him about and chasing him about, but oh my goodness, he dodges that miller right enough, and he, well, I can't catch him. So off he goes, and he runs on down until he comes to the smiddy. And when he comes to the smiddy, the blacksmith's making horseshoes and horseshoe nails. And he sees, what's this, he thinks? Is that a wee bannock? Oh my goodness, he says. I could go a right good taste of a wee bannock. I'm getting guy thirsty here and guy hungry. And a wee bannock goes with a good bit of ale. Oh, he says, that would be brilliant, he says, if I could have a wee bannock. So he says, I sneak up with this wee bannock. Oh, the wee bannock was frightened when he heard that the miller that the blacksmith could go and be a wee bit ill and he thinks to himself, oh, I need to get out of here quick. So he runs as fast as he could with the blacksmith chasing him and the blacksmith throws a horseshoe and he throws a hammer, but my goodness, he's rubbish and he misses and the wee bannock's off and he runs 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 until he comes to a farmhouse with a large peat stack at the end yet. And in it, he ran to the fireside. The farmer shouts to his wife, Turn it, look, it's a wee bannock. Catch it and I'll give you half. So Janet, she puts down her knitting and up she gets and she chases after the wee bannock. My goodness, but does she know through a towel over it? And does she know through a dishcloth over it? And does she know Miss Bath times? Oh my goodness, thinks this wee bannock. I hate to get you here quick. So he dodges this way, he dodges that way and out he goes, out through the door. He races by the stream to the next house and whirls in to sit beside the fire. Oh. The good wife here is stirring the gruel, and the good man was plaiting the rush ropes. Oh look, Jock, says the good wife. A wee bannock. Oh, you're right saying you fancy a wee bannock. Come on, let's catch it. Oh, so they both get up, and they try and catch the bannock. Oh, jings. Jock runs the other man way. His wife runs the other way. The bannock runs under the chair, out of the chair, under the table, over the table, this way, that way, in, out, upstairs, downstairs. Can they catch that wee bannock? No, they cannot catch that wee bannock. And the wee bannock races straight out the door. It ran down to the next house and it settled by the fire, just as the folk sat down to hear their dinner. Shh, said the good man. 
I can see a wee bonnock. And sitting by the fire. Shut the door quick, he says. And do we get a grip here? Well, when the bannock heard this, the bannock ran straight into the kitchen and straight out the back door. It ran and it ran across the fields through the winds until it came to the next house. Now, it was getting dark by this time because the wee bannock had been up, oh, since before lunchtime. And this was a long time ago. And as it was getting dark, the folk in this house were getting ready for their bed. And then ran the wee bannock. Well, it stood there and it watched. The woman was getting into her nighty. The man was taking off his trousers. Then he spots the wee bannock. Oh, what's that? He asks his good wife. Is that a bannock? Ha <laughs> ha, he says the good wife. Oh, he says if you catch that wee bannock, you wake as a wee bannock the one at breakfast. I sweet could, says the good wife. So off they go, chasing the bannock every which way, running, 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 but the bannock runs out the front door with a good man running behind him with the trousers on. Quick, shouts his wife, here's your trousers, fling them out of the bannock, see if you can catch it. So he flings his trousers out of the bannock, they land in the bannock, and the bannock's trapped. <gasps> the bannock twists this way. He twists that way. Oh, he wrestles out, he wrestles in, he wrestles out, he wrestles in, and finally he gets to it and he runs off. But the good man chasing behind him without his trousers so on. Well, it was a rare chase over all the fields, through the winds, across the stream, up the hill, down the hill. Oh, but eventually, the good man runs out of steam and he has to turn back without catching the bannock. And he walks back home half naked. Because he's lost his trousers. Oh, my goodness me. Well, it had grown dark though. And the wee bannock couldn't see very well. And the wee bannock's looking right. He's looking left. He's looking up. He's looking down. He looks behind him. That way. He looks behind him. That way. But there's nobody chasing him. But he still thinks I'll maybe better get a spark and see where I can hide. And off he runs. And he's went through the wind bushes. And he fell right into a fox's hole. Oh no! Well, the fox hadn't ate for two days. So that was guy pleased to see the wee bannock. Ooh! Welcome, welcome, said the fox. And he snapped the wee bannock right into. And that was the end of the wee bannock. And if you enjoyed this story, please come into the library and choose some library books that you can take home and read stories of your own, or even make up stories of your own. Thank you for listening and I hope you enjoy the rest of National Storytelling Day and that you will tell a story of your own. Thank you. Bye bye.